All right, so far so good. Now let's wrap this first section up by applying another cool feature, which is a slight rotation for each individual slab right now to give it just an extra little detail of our form generation. So what we have successfully done so far is we have constructed a list of slabs, space in the Z direction, and applied a graph mapping for each radius of that flow slab. Now we want to rotate them more or less individually. And the way to do that is to actually, first of all, get the master component that does that, type and rotate. You will get a different set of different rotation components. But what we want to have is the most simple rotation component, which is this guy here. Rotation on an object in a plane. So you can also find it, control alt mouse button and transform Euclidean and the rotate is there. It has three inputs. We just have to look at the first two. Yeah, we don't need to more or less take in the plane into account right now because that is given by the geometry itself. So what we want to control is the geometry and the angle, right? And we will get the same geometry just rotated and the X is just a transform that actually makes up this geometry. Just to make it a bit shorter this time, we just hook up the P into our G values here. Yeah, I can hide basically by control Q, my component here. So I just see currently what I'm or having activated here. And now the most crucial thing to, for us is to understand the A input, which is the angle. Currently, the or in usual, the angle is always given in by radians yeah so radians is something that you can understand by if you're familiar with that that's good if you're not familiar with that it's actually always dependent on the pi function so it's taking a circle and dividing the pi number by a value as you can see 0 0.5 times pi right now now if i want to work with degrees which is a maybe a little bit more common i can do that in several ways the most easy way is to actually go to a right mouse button, click on A, and then say degrees. Change my input to degrees. That means if I now type in something from zero, smaller than 360, and I hook it up here, if I now rotate it, the whole geometry will rotate, as you can see. Let me just make it a little more illustrative. So as I rotate this, everything is now being rotating. Now what it's doing, it's again something that, that takes in a multitude of curves and applies one value to all of those curves. We have to do something similar, what we have done with our R input to the A input. That is to give all the individual polylines a different angle. And that is something that we can again use our remap function for. And we can literally this time just copy and paste our set up here because we have already defined that once. So I'm going to copy the remap here, the bounce, the construct domain and the two sliders that go actually into that. Copy and paste. Just move it a little more away from the other setup. And now what we want to do is actually just change the overall construct domain, which is defining our range of our rotation. So I'm going to set the start here to zero because it should start with zero rotation. And as I go up, I can change that now to, let's say, 90 degrees. Yeah. So let me just double click on this slider here and maybe set the max to 360, which is a full rotation. And my numeric value here, I will set to 90. That is a 90 degree turn. I said OK. And now this has been applied to my slider. I hook this up to my A, and as you can see, this has been now applied to my tower. And what that means actually is quite nice that I can actually, if I change my, my rotation value, my max rotation value, you can see that in the tower. So if I put everything on zero, there's no rotation at all. And as I kind of start to transform it, you can see that this is actually now rotating, right? So this is very nice. If you are a little bit more observant, you can see that it's a little bit weird in a sense that it's taking the graph that we have put in before and also mapping that to the angles actually. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want a linear rotation. So that's something now we have to actually change. And that is simply 
or easily done by taking in the inputs that we had before here, right? So we can just take in maybe the R input from our first remap function, yeah? Or we could just take in the series component and put this guy into our domain bounce and our series goes also in our V for values. Now what we have done here is simply saying that this is the first list that we had, which is a linear function. And now the rotation is also being linear, as you can see, because that's something maybe more likely for you to understand or to work with. So if that was too fast, what I did before, I took the remapped values and I said, maybe that's not the, really the way that I want to work. I want to actually take the linear list and I have put that into my bounds and my values. And what I've done here is just to find my new domain or source or target domain and said, I want to rotate this by 180 being the full rotation on the highest level. And that's basically twisting the tower now. Okay, so that is very good, actually. And we can wrap it up by displaying now the surface. Right now, we are always looking at curves. This could be irritating. And we want to do that by saying loft. Take the loft command. And just again, quickly, that was too quick. Just type in loft. You will get the loft option. Control, Alt, mouse button. It's in surface. I hook up all of my closed curves, should be fine, and you will generate a surface. What I wanna do is just maybe highlight this surface with a different color so I can see it better. And I want to use a custom preview for that. That's a component. So I just type in custom preview. This guy, though with the green circle, you hook it up to my G. I can now disable with control Q my loft here. And as a default, the color that you always get is this pinkish color. We can change this color though by taking a swatch, which is allowing you to do that. The color swatch, that should be in params also in inputs. And you just put it into M, which is your material. And now you can just, by clicking once on the color, you can get this pop-up window and actually control with different settings down here. You can also just go here and change the hue and add the saturation and apply that. And now you can already see our tower that is taking shape. Now this is something we want to work on and continue on with. So very good. That is the first basic setup using a linear array of points to construct actually this closed surface that we will now use to actually apply our panel link to it. So let's continue on. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please feel free to leave a comment, a like, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also note that this video is part of a 13 hour long online tutorial series called Algorithmic Skyscraper Design. You can find it on my e-learning platform, Design Upgrade. That is courses.design-upgrade. Com. To get access to all online courses, just sign up and secure yourself an all-access membership. Choose one of the many courses available with one new added course each month. In the algorithmic skyscraper design, I will take you from zero to hero for practice-based visual scripting inside Rhino. Learn also to create advanced environmental simulations and design user interfaces with Grasshopper. So see you there and let us make some design upgrades.